Okay. Um, in order to assist you with the lab we are going to be doing next week that you were given today, this you read in order to find the answers to this, okay, the, the handout with all the blanks. But I thought it might be helpful if I kind of went through the lab and kind of explain what we're going to do and showed you exactly how we're going to set up the apparatus and maybe that will also help you answer some of these questions that are in the handout. So, we are doing a lab in which we are going to analyze the rate at which an enzyme catalyzed chemical reaction occurs. The reaction we are going to study is the rate at which hydrogen peroxide is broken down by an enzyme that you make in your cells every moment of every day called catalase. This is our supply of catalase in this beaker. So we got hydrogen peroxide like you buy at the grocery store. And we are going to break it down with catalase and we're going to see how fast that reaction occurs over time. Now, your cells, you don't just buy this at the store, you also make it in your own cells. It is a toxic byproduct of your metabolic activities. It is toxic. You do not want to take a swig of this stuff, and you also don't want it building up in your cells. So your cells have to have a way to break down this stuff the moment it's made. So, your cells produce this enzyme called catalase, I believe they have now actually changed the name to pyro peroxidase, which makes sense. Peroxide is what it breaks down. It breaks down hyd hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, into two harmless substances, water, H2O, and oxygen gas. Okay? So, an easy way to tell that catalase is actually working is if bubbles are produced because oxygen gas in a liquid rises up out of the liquid as bubbles. So if we combine hydrogen peroxide and catalase and we see bubbles, we can safely assume that those bubbles are being created because oxygen gas is being produced as this is broken down. To kind of show you that, this is some hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to measure a little bit of it out. Okay, 10 mLs, and I'm putting that into a beaker, okay? Now, if you look, okay, there's, I'm not sure how well this is showing up, let me see. All right, yeah, there's no bubbles, no bubbles, okay? It looks just like water, okay? But now I'm going to add one milliliter, which is basically a dropper full up to the top line, I'm going to add catalase, okay? Now, I'm putting that in there. And what you hopefully will be able to see is now it looks kind of cloudy to you, I'm sure. But inside, there's lots of little tiny bubbles forming, okay? And those bubbles are all giving off oxygen gas, all right? Now, you can hear it too. Sounds like a Coca-Cola in a glass, okay? Um, now, how can we measure the rate of this enzyme catalyzed reaction then? We can measure the amount of oxygen produced over time. We just need to have a timer and a way to capture the oxygen so we can measure it. And that's where this comes in, okay? So, what we need to do first is set up our device so that we can measure um, the oxygen gas. So the first thing you need is to fill up your uh, little plastic box with water, almost almost all the way, about an inch from the top would be good. And then you're going to take a graduated cylinder, okay, and you're going to submerge it totally in this water, okay. And we're going to try not to get any air bubbles in there, though sometimes that is easier said than done. Okay. 
Now, we're going to lift the closed end out and leave the open end submerged below the level of the water. Okay? And we're going to put it in this clamp like that. And we do want to try to have the lines around so we can actually read them. Now, once we've got that secured, now we've got a reaction chamber. This is where we're always going to react our hydrogen peroxide and our catalase. Okay? So the first thing everyone's going to do is we're just going to measure how much oxygen is produced over time. We're not doing anything to it at all, just measuring the rate of oxygen produced over time. So, once again, I'm going to measure out 10 mLs. of hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to pour that in my reaction chamber. Then I'm going to take a milliliter, again up to the top line, of my catalase and I'm going to drop that in my reaction chamber. And it's bubbling right away, so I'd like to not miss all the good part of my reaction. So I put the stopper on really quick. I'm going to submerge this in the water, and I'm going to put this plastic tube up into the chamber. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it is bubbling like crazy. There are bubbles coming right up, okay? And you've got to kind of be careful because if you're not careful, your liquid will actually run into your plastic tube. And I think actually that might have happened to me. We want to try to keep the liquid that was in your reaction chamber from running into the tube and clogging up the works. But if you look, there is a crazy amount of oxygen gas that we have already captured. Now, the trick is to have more than one person in your lab group because from the moment you start, Someone every 30 seconds is going to be measuring how much gas is produced, and you'll do that for five minutes. And then we should have a baseline against which to compare other things um, that we might do to catalase to see if it affects how quickly it can break down the hydrogen peroxide in the reaction chamber. We might heat the catalase, we might chill the catalase, we might expose the catalase to different pHs. We might add more catalase or less amounts of catalase. We might add more hydrogen peroxide. Less. We could do any number of things to see how the effect, how, how those environmental effects alter the speed of that enzyme catalyzed reaction. Okay? So, I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps you at least with some of the questions on your handout. And always, if, if you're confused, email me or you know, post to Edmodo and I try to check it and, and I will try to help you that way or stop by and ask me a question uh, while you're at school sometime. All right, I hope that helps and that's where we're headed next week. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon.